November 2022, the art industry made headlines when Paul Allen's art collection, who was one of the founders of Microsoft, sold for a whopping 1.6 billion US dollars. Spending millions on art seems extraordinary to us, but for the art connoisseurs, it is a way of life. According to a report by Art Basel, in 2022, the global art market reached a revenue of 65.1 billion US dollars. In this video, we will give you a glimpse of how this world of rich and tasteful works by sharing with you the details of this record-breaking auction. First, let's talk about the primary art market. Like any other market, the art market is also divided into primary and secondary categories. Every piece of art begins its life in the primary art market when it is initially made available for purchase. Typically, the sale in this market will happen through a gallery showcasing the artist's work. Gallerists with experience will have their own aesthetic and areas of concentration, and they will select artwork that has a narrative and aesthetic that they can connect with with their niche. The gallery then receives a commission when an artwork is bought and sold. Next, let's look at the secondary art market. No matter how many times it is purchased and resold in the future, a work enters its secondary market lifetime after it is sold for the first time. At this point in the work's lifespan, its worth has the potential to rise significantly. A boost in price can result if it was produced by an artist whose stature has grown since it was made. Certain art pieces that represent an artist's career legacy also increase in value. However, just as in any market, speculation has the potential to raise prices on the secondary market for no apparent cause other than a brief increase in demand. Death, divorce and debt are traditionally the three Ds that form the secondary market. In Paul Allen's case, it was, unfortunately, death in 2018. He had willed that his art collection was to be sold after his death and the proceeds donated to charitable causes. The Paul Allen art collection was sold at Christie's in New York. It is a British auction house with branches in New York, London and Hong Kong. Other major names you should know are Sotheby's, Beijing Poly International Auction Company, Heritage Auction and China Guardian. Auction houses would accept artwork that they believe has a strong possibility of selling. Each item sold results in a commission for them. These sellers will look at how well the art has sold in previous auctions or galleries unless it's a piece by a well-known artist whose name alone attracts collectors. Auction houses can be sure to make money by selling the work of artists with limited prior auction experiences for low prices. Christie's had guaranteed the entire sale, meaning the auction house had agreed to pay the Allen estate a minimum negotiated price for the whole cash. It is safe to conclude that Christie's knew they would succeed with this specific auction. And why was that? Firstly, there were great expectations around the collection because of the profile of the collector. Paul Allen was the 44th richest person in the world at the time of his death. Secondly, and more importantly, the collection was literally a treasure trove. It included paintings by great artists like Paul Cezanne, Vincent van Gogh and George Seurat. These one-of-a-kind pieces have historical significance and everybody wants to get a hold of them. Next, let me talk about how the bidding works. Participants may bid larger amounts in competition with one another after an opening price is presented. The auctioneer will finally hammer home the winning bid when no one else is prepared to raise their bid. The bidder who submits the highest offer wins the item. A standoff between two parties can occasionally increase the cost of the artwork. Daydream, a painting by Andrew Wyeth, was estimated to be worth 2 million. However, during the auction, a heated round of bidding continued between Eleanor Notitus and Sin Lee, which drove up the price of the painting to an astounding 20 million. A lot of the bidders would have their placard, called a paddle in auction terminology, in one hand and their phones in the other hand. These bidders would be staff members from the auction house bidding on behalf of another party. There were quite a few such cases during this auction. In fact, the prized Surat painting was won by a bidder on the phone with Christie's Asia chairman Sin Lee for a $130 million price. Brett Gorey, Dominique Levy, Philip Hoffman and Larry Gazoyan were among the prominent art dealers that filled the crowd at the auction. These art dealers attend auctions and gallery viewings in order to enter satisfy the specific demands of their clients or build their inventories. 
Even Paul Allen, for all his deep understanding of art, relied on the services of an art dealer. In fact, the Seurat painting that was sold for 149 million at the auction was initially acquired by Allen in 1999 through his art dealer David Nash. Allen was his client from 1997 to 2005. To obtain the art you desire, you must first be aware of your options. This necessitates having a pose on all of the numerous art merchants at any given time. To know when a transaction makes financial sense and when it doesn't, you need to know people, have connections and have the necessary knowledge. This requires an expert, not just someone who is interested in art. On the other hand, if you are an artist, then you might use an art dealer to connect with potential buyers and sell your work for the maximum price. In any case, they are paid a commission from the sales proceeds of these works. Some buyers may also send art advisors to the auctions. Unlike art dealers, art advisors do not hold inventory of their own. Instead, they would do research and scouting on behalf of their client and provide them with an expert advice. In this particular auction, Deb Robinson of Art Market Advisors purchased a Geoffrey O'Keefe on behalf of a client for over 27 million. Are you now intrigued by this world? Even if you aren't interested in art itself, following the art market can help you gauge investor sentiment. Moreover, even if you aren't going to bid, you can still attend an auction because of its public event. Christie also allows you to live stream an auction so that you can enjoy the auction as a spectator. If you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.